My guest today is a decorated senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, representing Kaduna Central Senatorial District. He is also the chairman of the Senate Committee on Banking, Insurance, and Other Financial Institutions. He is also the governorship candidate flying the flag of the All Progressives Congress. His name is Senator Uba Sani. It's good to have you on the program, sir. Thank you very much. You moved a motion for the Senate to support the decision of the CBN to redesign the NARA notes. Why is the support of the Senate necessary as for the APES Bank that is supposed to be autonomous? The Senate Committee on Banking, Insurance and Other Financial Institutions uh, have uh, uh, constitutional responsibility to oversight the central bank and all the financial institutions in Nigeria. It's our constitutional responsibility. If you look at the Fiscal Responsibility Act, you realize that uh, we have responsibility to even approve the budget of the central bank, their expenditure and their revenues, and all their monetary policies of the central bank must be oversighted by the Committee on Banking, Insurance and other financial institutions. These are the uh, laws I'm quoting because, uh, of course, you, we have to do our job. And uh, when the central bank uh, announced their decisions to redesign some Naira notes, that is 200 Naira, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes, uh, of course, uh, the central bank governor uh, briefed the Committee on Banking, Insurance and other financial institutions knowing fully that uh, we have responsibility to oversight the central bank. But uh, beyond that, if you look at the rules of the Senate, you agree with me that um, we have to report back uh, at all times. And the only way to do that is to go back to the floor of the Senate, inform the entire uh, members of the National Assembly, particularly the Senate, which we are representing, our deliberations and why the central bank decided to redesign the NERA notes. Uh, that is our constitutional responsibility. So we try to do that and the only way to do that is to go and explain to the colleagues and I did that by raising uh, order 41 and 51. That, is, that uh, was talking about the urgent matter of urgent national importance. And of course, I did that because if you listen to the responses of, uh, uh, if you are following what uh, Nigerians were saying, particularly the politicians, the businessmen, and virtually everyone, some were not really convinced that uh, the decision was necessary. But some of us that have uh, privilege of sitting down with the central bank governor, and the management of central bank have better knowledge about the decision. So it is our responsibility to inform our colleagues and by extension inform Nigerians that are not privileged. So we did that and I am happy that uh, my colleagues in the Senate supported the central bank uh, decision. Very valid point you cited there, distinguished, but one common issue that has been raised, especially by your colleagues during the debate, is the timeline that has been put on this, um, um, on this uh, the said uh, intervention. And many people believe that the timeline is too short. Do you agree with No, I totally disagree with that position. Because, of course, uh, my own concern is not about those who are talking about the timeline. Because if you're talking about the timeline, that means you have so much money at home. We're talking about few Nigerians that have billions in their homes. And for me, if you have billions in your home, you know how to take the money to the bank. Why can't you take your money to the bank within two months if your money is illegitimate? You should be able to do that. And of course, the central bank have also come out with a press statement, uh, not uh, even uh, asking all the branches of central bank across the country, that is the 36 states, to also open their branches 
for individuals that have money who might not necessarily uh, uh, take you to the commercial bank because of the level of uh, 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 with the traffic there. Maybe a lot of people have money to take to the commercial bank. Central bank said, no, we can assist. You can approach central bank branches across the country and they can assist you. For those who don't even have bank account, the central bank have opened that window for them to get to the central bank, deposit their money, uh, they will open accounts for them within 30 minutes and their money is safe. So I don't think the timeline is the problem. The problem is that a lot of people complaining are um, uh, mostly politicians like me who are looking at the, the timing. Some are saying, why well, can't we wait until after election? But why do we have to wait until after election? When, we are all, when the reason for this is very, very critical. We are saying we are facing the danger of people printing this currency. 500 Naira notes and 1,000 Naira notes have been attacked already, as we are speaking. And of course, we cannot wait and said we have to wait until after elections. That means it's just to serve the interests of few people in this country. But the overall interest of our own country is more important than the individual of the few, than, than, than the interests of the few. So for me, I disagree with the time frame. I believe from now to 31st January, everyone can take his money safely to commercial bank so of his choice. So how does this translate to the common man? How would it benefit the ordinary Nigerians? How would they benefit? Of course, this? it will benefit the ordinary Nigerians because when our economy is good, the value of dollar will crash, the value of naira will, will, will increase, and the common man will benefit because the common man is suffering because our economy is bad. That is the reason. If the value of dollar goes up, Everything in the market will be affected. That's why even the common man is suffering. So for me, this policy is in the best interest of the common man in this country, the best interest uh, of our country, and I believe uh, we should support it. Even the common man will, be the ben will benefit more than any other person. Because, because we're also going to, uh, this will support, I mean, the financial inclusion. Because you will agree with me that a lot of people in rural areas uh, don't even have bank accounts. So I'm more concerned about those that are vulnerable and unbanked. Not the rich politicians who want the time to be extended because of election. I will, I'm more concerned about the vulnerable and the uh, unbanked. Those ones, uh, we at the level of committee on banking, are now working closely with the central bank to ensure the central bank uh, come up with aggressive sensitization, uh, also mobilizing the branches of the central banks across the country as well as the commercial banks to reach out to some areas that don't have banks so that we can make an arrangement to at least uh, look at the interests of those who live in an area where there are no commercial banks, so that no one suffer, and everyone will be looked into, and they will, will make sure that no one lose even one naira of his own legitimate money. That is the most important thing. So we are looking at that, and in the next one week or so, we'll work with the central bank to ensure that everybody in this country, particularly the poor people and the vulnerable, are protected. For me, they are the most important people in this country. That is what I'm looking at. Okay, we we'll take a short breather. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The National Assembly is a busy place. As the bastion of democracy, it is a place where bills are presented, motions debated, laws made, and the yearnings of the people are laid bare. Come with us as we take you through the workings of the National Assembly. We take you through plenary, committee meetings and probes, all to ensure smooth working of the democratic process.
thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining us, you're still watching the Hallow Chambers. And my guest today is Senator Obasani. Um, let's talk politics. How energized is your governorship campaign now that the court has struck out the suit uh, challenging your candidacy? No, I think uh, what I can say here is that even before uh, the court uh, decided, uh, I did not believe there was any problem because we had free and fair election. Everyone was given opportunity. So I think uh, I was not really worried, to be frank. I wasn't worried. But uh, having said that, uh, we in Kaduna State, I don't think we have any problem, particularly uh, in this very election. Uh, like I said earlier, in one of my uh, interviews, that uh, APC uh, will get the highest number of votes uh, in Kaduna. Uh, the only states probably we are looking at uh, trying to challenge us might be Lagos State because of the population. Mm -hmm. But outside Lagos State because of the population and because Aswaju is from Lagos State, there is no state in Nigeria will give both the presidential candidate, myself the gubernatorial candidate, and all the people contesting election at various levels more votes than Kaduna State. Mm -hmm. And I have my reason. And uh, one reason is that uh, our governor, uh, Malin Nasr Ahmed Arifai, have done more than any governor in the history of Kaduna State. When you go to Kaduna, you will agree with me that uh, there is a lot of transformation in Kaduna. The over renewal uh, program of our amiable governor have really helped us a lot. Uh, we have done a lot in infrastructural development, we've done a lot in our educational development, we've done a lot in our healthcare, human capital development, agricultural development, and all those things. So these are the promises made by our governor, 2050 when he was elected. As we are speaking now, I can you even the opposition in Kaduna said will agree with me that Malin Nasser Ahmed Rufai have come have achieved virtually everything he promised. And uh, so we are going to campaign on those achievements of our amiable governor. And beside that, uh, some of us that uh, are contesting on the platform of uh, APC, uh, we have our track records. For instance, uh, I'm here in the National Assembly, representing the Central Senatorial District in the last three and a half years. I did something with uh, other candidates, or PDP, these are the leading parties, uh, Labour Party and uh, NNPP. All the three candidates were at certain times uh, represented uh, their own various constituencies to the National Assembly, uh, precisely the House of Reps. And I can assure you, the Kodunasi people are even disappointed that uh, their parties presented them because uh, if you look at their track records when they came to the National Assembly, uh, none of them have ever even moved a single motion to close to sponsor an bill. And they haven't done anything in terms of uh, uh, bringing uh, development in their various uh, constituencies. So they have failed warply. And uh, in Kaduna, where people that are extremely very uh, cosmopolitan, where people that are very knowledgeable. So our people can only vote for you on the basis of a track record. And when you look, look at that, the candidate of APC from my humble self to those contesting for the Senate, House of Reps, and the State Assembly have best track record than the other parties. So we don't have any problem. So, and that is why today in Kaduna State, we're not talking about any other parties, APC and the rest mm. as well. Well, Kaduna State, as you said, is a cosmopolitan state, but the recent insecurity and heightened tension in Kaduna State has sort of affected the cosmopolitan outlook. How do you hope to restore the people's confidence in security uh, in terms of assuring them that you're going to protect their lives and property? Yeah, like I said, the, the Kaduna State people have been following what we've been doing particularly here in the National Assembly. They're also aware that the issue of security is not with the state governors, neither with the members of the National Assembly. 
most of them are aware of uh, the constitutional provisions uh, and they are also aware that uh, someone like me have been pushing for the creation of state police in the National Assembly. If you can recall, because you've been covering the National Assembly for years now, you will agree with me that uh, uh, I'm the one uh, at the moment that uh, I've been pushing since I came to the Senate for the creation of the state police. I had about four bills uh, that when you combine them together, you will have a state police uh, if you look at our constitution. Uh, of course, uh, unfortunately, we did not succeed because we lost at the level of the conference committee uh, because to amend any uh, part of the constitution, including the creation of state police in Nigeria, you need both the, nationals, both the Senate and the House of Reps uh, to sit together. And of course, at the level of the Senate, we all agree unanimously that uh, my bill was timely and uh, unanimously the bill was supported, but unfortunately we lost at the level of the conference committee. But uh, uh, sitting here, I still believe that the only way we can solve the issue of insecurity in Nigeria, we're not talking about Kaduna State. Uh, there is no state in Nigeria that is immune to insecurity problem. Every state has a problem of insecurity in this country, as we're speaking. And of course, it is a national crisis. And uh, of course, if you look at the constitution of our country, uh, the state governors are chief security officers of their state, but they don't control the commission of police. They don't control the military, they don't control the, the Air Force, they don't control the Navy. So they cannot do much. We will try our best, uh, but uh, we have worked closely at the level of our state with the, all the security agencies in Nigeria. And that is the reason why in the last few months uh, we have relative peace in our state. There's no much problem in security in Kano State any longer again. Go and check the record as right now, because our governor have gone out of his way to even work with all the security agencies in Nigeria, and because of that, we are making progress and we are achieving a lot. So we don't have much problem in security in Kaduna State, but that shouldn't be the problem, uh, because uh, going forward, uh, only recently, the state governors unanimously, not only the North, uh, southern set governors, even the northern set governors came together and uh, unanimously agree that the only way we can end the issue of insecurity in Nigeria is by the creation of the state police because we are liking the boots. Okay, you're a well-known lawmaker from the north and we have seen you on the floor stand up in the interest of the, your people in your region. How has your legislative experience, you know, helped you to grow or to impact your wealth of experience? And how do you hope to bring this into the governance if you eventually get elected as the governor of Kaduna State? Yeah, like I always say, that's why I give example of the form, the my own, uh, my so-called uh, uh, opponents who came to the National Assembly and end up with us sponsoring a single bill. As we are speaking here, I'm the only senator uh, that have two major bills assented by Mr. President. If you remember, I sponsored the uh, Bofair Act, that's Banking and Other Financial Institution Act, that was, that was assented by Mr. President uh, 2020. Uh, Bofair Act was obsolete, and of course, uh, it was a very important bill we a sponsor that have to do with the financial service sector in this country and I was I'm really happy uh, my colleagues unanimously supported the bill and uh, we amended the Buffet Act uh, at least so that it would be aligned with the best uh, practices and of course uh, uh, that is one of the major bill I was able to sponsor and Mr. President assented. For me, it was really important. And again, if you can recall, I also amended the Amcon Act, which Mr. President assented 2021. So as, I was, as we are speaking right now, 
I have 31 bills to my name and I probably uh, have the highest number of bills that are progressing now at the level of National Assembly. For me, it's a very important experience. I've learned a lot. And of course, in the past, I also worked at the executive arm of the government when I worked with the former president, Obasanjo, as advisor on public affairs. So I've worked virtually in virtually every arm of the government. And before coming to the Senate, you will recall that I also worked with uh, my governor, Governor Salamed Erufa, as a governor of Kaduna State. So we have, I have the experience, I have the knowledge, and of course I will go to campaign based on my track record, like I said.